first item we're going to have a look at from next week's granary sale is a really interesting medal which is a Queen's South Africa medal and it has these five bars attached which show the places that this person served so there's Queen Victoria's head it's the South Africa medal on the side it has the name of the person the recipient which is Private H Piper who was in the Imperial Yeomanry and he served at the Cape Colony, um, Orange Free State, Transvaal and South Africa 1901 and 2. This we collected from a local house with lots of other interesting things and it's just an, uh, a nice medal um, and estimated at 100 or 2, something like that. Slightly related, slightly loosely related to it, is this. Now if you imagine at the time of this of this war in uh, South Africa, sort of late 1900s, and imagine being the, uh, the surgeon out in the field, having to amputate limbs, and this is the kit that the surgeon would have had. And here it is, so this is an original military or possibly a naval um, amputation kit. So this is the amputation saw, this is the tool that would have been used to, to chisel and break the bone so that you could remove someone's leg or arm. And in here there's awful looking uh, hooks and chains for holding the wounds open. An interesting thing, it's made by Allen and Hanbury's of London. Beautiful brass bound mahogany case. What a rare item that is. Um, I think it's estimated at two or three hundred. Wouldn't be surprised if it made five hundred or so. But what an interesting thing to show to your after-dinner guests <laughs> before amputating one of their legs. <laughs> so, oh, ne next to it, actually, these came from the house of uh, someone who lived near here who was a doctor. And we have boxfuls of interesting old surgical um, instruments, so you could set yourself up in business. Here's a set of surgeon's knives in their original box as well, all ivory handled. These here are, that's called a fleam. <laughs> Sound like I know what I'm talking about, don't I? <laughs> the only thing here that I know, know what it is. But there are so many interesting things this time. I really would recommend browsing through the catalogue. Right next to it, that's a beautiful little ivory carving of Eros, a headless Eros, but uh, it's it goes on this base, so it obviously has been like that for some time, but what a wonderful carving. Uh, what else have we got? There's a nice watch here, I think, worth a look. We'll try and be a bit selective with what we're looking at this time, rather than giving you a blanket view of the whole sail. This is a Zenith Pilot Watch. Uh, it's in a chrome, case, chrome plate case, isn't it? That one or is it aluminium? Yeah, chrome plate. But nice original box and papers. What's that estimate, you think? 100 to 150? Yeah, okay. Um, we'll just have a quick look up here because actually, if you're watching the Antiques Roadshow the other day, which I Never watched, but I did see it on Sunday. They had a pair of these that the silver expert was um, saying was the fine, was the most beautiful thing he'd seen that day, and it was exactly the same as these. Unfortunately, these have been converted to electric; so they've had a hole drilled in them. But they are solid silver, very elegant design, very nice. Quite easy to convert back to candlesticks, I should think. And they're going to be a hundred, two hundred, something like that really beautiful things that are quite affordable and that you can own yourself. Um, this I think is nice. It's um, Copenhagen. It's a B, uh, what's that, Bing and a Grand, I can't remember. Yeah, that's it. So it's Copenhagen um, bisque porcelain ornament there. That's rather nice. Um, fabulous. Stag's head here. A 10 pointer stag from 1926, so nearly 100 years old. Unfortunately, he didn't quite make it that, that long. Uh, have a look over here. There are lots of 
fantastic things on the tables here. Um, we won't go up there, but there are some really interesting early air rifles and other items here. Like this original um, oil on panel. Unfortunately, I don't know who it's by, but whoever painted it, painted that as well. But they're in nice, very good quality cabinet frames, these. They're quite appealing images. <laughs> this item here, we don't see very often. And that is a fire grenade. So <laughs> that was a, an idea that didn't last very long. But if you saw a fire, you just lob that in and uh, hope for the best. <laughs> Really interesting selection of things this time. Um, real brass stick barometer there. You hang on the wall. It's meant to be a ship's one, this. So it actually pivots with the motion of the ship. Um, always enamelled signs in these sails. We're into the taxidermy department. Another one of these leather upholstered pig stools, which apparently were retailed by Liberty. We're not sure whether this was a Liberty one or not, but um, still very cute little thing there. And taxidermy, so a lovely fish here in a bow front case. And it has the, the label on the front as well. It's a perch. And exotic birds under a very dusty old dome. What's that? A Satsuma dish. Uh, Cow's leg, <laughs> I should think. Is that a cow's leg? A deer. A deer, all right. Yeah. Oh dear. <laughs> and uh, some weapons here First War period um, and basket hilted swords and the Japanese katana. Interesting things there. And what else? Fascinating things. These sort of works of art in in boxes, sort of cabinet frames. A little collection of those in one lot. And also underneath the tables there are boxfuls of interesting collections of things under here. It's always worth a look through these. And um, so always some interesting things in these boxfuls here. Here's one with some militaria, so caps and berets and all sorts of military items. It's just a replica gun there. What else? A whole collection of barometers there, a run of barometers and wall clocks. And a railway signal. <laughs> it's quite smart, isn't it? So, what we'll do um, the best way to view all of this up on this floor really is to browse through it on the internet. It's, um, everything is photographed and you can browse through. There's over a thousand lots here that are being sold on Wednesday. We'll have a quick look downstairs at the two floors of furniture and I'll give you an idea of what that looks like downstairs. This floor has a huge selection of furniture and it looks really interesting. There's such an array of different periods of furniture here ranging from uh, 17th century oak up to mid-century furniture and much more modern things. This is a lovely small size um, desk that dates to about 1910 there and you'd call these tablet supports on there but it's it's a curved desk that's quite unusual. Um, we'll just wander around the back here because there seem some really nice things here. This mirror we unscrewed from the wall of a house in Hastings and it's absolutely enormous and it looked fabulous on the wall of the house that it came from but they didn't want it so we're going to sell that next week that's going to be well the estimates about three or four hundred I think but it would be a bargain at that it's a genuine Victorian um, this is gesso plaster frame it's a really nice decorative thing but, um, there it is and we'll go around here actually there's a lovely table here so this is I should think cherry wood, I would have thought, a farmhouse table, but if you have a look around the other side, because there are drawers around the other side, and I think that's really nice. Look at that. And it's, and so it becomes an oval. Uh, pull those out like that. 
So with a set of sort of farmhouse chairs around there, you'd get about 10 people around that table. It's just a really nice, probably early 19th century farmhouse table. Oh, a lovely chair here, look at the colour of that. Beautiful polished colour of that leather there with a mahogany frame, so it's a proper um, Victorian office chair there, a revolving office chair. These are very hard to find, these are an original one. But, uh, particularly with the original upholstery. And here's a nice um, sofa as well. I think it's a double drop end sofa, and that'll be um, about 1900 in date. Nice condition. Um, what else? There are interesting things everywhere here to look at. Actually, there was a nice thing over here mid century sofa there. Fabulous bookcase here. Look at the carved columns on this. So that's the size of it. So about a six foot long Victorian bookcase there. And here is a, a proper collector's cabinet. So it's all in oak. And when you open the doors, you've got these slides inside with glass topped collector's compartments inside. So you can take those drawers right out. There it is, a fabulous cabinet that. Quite rare to find these. And so that would house a, a coin or metal collection or whatever you want really. But I mean that should make a thousand or so I'd have thought. Very nice um, French uh, gilt framed parlour uh, set here. With its original slightly shabby upholstery but I think that's quite fashionable. Bench there. And that looks good doesn't it? Look at that. Very nice. <laughs> it's a refectory table here. Look at the size of those baluster supports. Lovely thick oak plank top on there. Uh, there's a lovely um, little hall settle over there. Pitch pine, Victorian. Looks like it's from. It was from a church that one, wasn't it? Yes. Yes, we collected that from a local church. We were asked to. <laughs> pine cupboard over here as well. You just have to search everywhere here. There are so many interesting and nice things in every corner here. So there's this Victorian housemaid's cupboard here in pine. Like a piece of Urkel, <laughs> mid century Urkel wardrobe. An Urkel sofa, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Under there. Masses of things. Hundreds of lots of furniture in here. We'll just have one quick look downstairs and I'll show you what the basement looks like. So I just wanted to show you this that's in the basement here. And this is, uh, again, from the same church in Hastings, and it's uh, a font. Um, it's solid, um, I think it's sandstone, but it is carved from a lump of stone. It comes in a couple of sections, I think, doesn't it? Two sections. Two sections, so it's easy to move, sort of. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it looks easy when I watch them. But uh, that's a lovely thing, make a lovely garden urn there. And I there's no reserve on it, but I should think it's going to be three to five hundred at least. But what a great thing. That, that would cost a fortune. If you wanted to buy that in solid stone, I reckon you'd have to pay someone to probably three thousand quid, I should think, to make one of those. Um, we'll just have a quick scan around here because there's lots of garden things, garden benches, some garden machinery as well. and all sorts of things. Gives you the idea of the layout down here, but there's another, probably 300 lots of things down here. 
So it's absolutely full sail this time, as usual, and there's so many interesting house clearances lined up at the moment. It, it's busier than I've ever seen it. So lots of things lined up for after this sale as well, but please come and have a look at this one. So we're viewing on Saturday morning from nine till one on, no, we're closed Monday, it's bank holiday. Tuesday, we're open from nine till seven, and we start the sale on Wednesday with the top floor, small section, Start the sale at nine o'clock, but we're here from eight, so if you wanted to come along before the sale, the sale is open, you're welcome to come along and sit in on the auction, and uh, we just ask that you wear a mask and you sanitize when you arrive, so we have sanitizer here everywhere, and keep your social distance. But please do come and have a look, and have a look online. Thank you very much.